Elke dag zit u met zoveel vragen. Iedereen zoekt naar antwoorden. Persoonlijke antwoorden die ons kunnen sterken in ons geloof. Die antwoorden liggen soms voor het grijpen. Bereid u voor op Gods woorden die door de Bijbel tot u spreken. En vind de antwoorden met Bayless Conley. God will do as much good as he can for anyone to the degree that they will open their life to him. He is just a good God. But for those that will walk by faith, those that will trust him in their daily lives, that there are, are doors that will open for them that, that could never be opened in a million years of human trying. We're going to be looking at what it means to walk by faith. I believe you're going to find it very enlightening. Hier is Belis Kanli met het tweede deel van zijn preek van vorige week. For in all of us, we reap what we sow. Do not, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. It's quite clear, the book of Galatians says. But Jacob, though he would reap what he had sown, he eventually wrestled with God, and God changed his name to Israel. Israel means a prince with God and with men. His character changed. His attitude changed. And I have some friends that when their son was born, they felt very specifically that God had spoken to them about that boy, how God would use him, and how he would be involved in, in ministry and be involved in the Lord's work. And it wasn't just something that they were hopeful about. They had a very specific sense that the Spirit of the Lord had revealed that to them when he was born. And he was a pretty average kid, but when he got into his teens, he went off the rails. I mean, not just a little off the rails, he went way off the rails. He was as far from being Christ-like as you could possibly imagine. And his posture was one of belligerence when it came to the gospel, when it came to Christianity. But they held on to that word, and they had spoken it when he was young, and they spoke it his entire life. They let their lips agree with what God had revealed to them. And you know what? It all turned around not too, too long ago. He's come back to God with a passion. And their declarations that were consistent with what God have, had said have proved to be powerful. The same young man whose life was anything but Christ-like has become a minister of the gospel today and has one of the most tender hearts you ever want to see. Now, while Rebecca and Jacob's scheming is not to be commended, God in his wisdom and by his grace used those fallible, flawed vessels to bring about his plans and God in turn should be praised If the blessing would have gone to Esau, who knows what might have happened? He was profane. He was godless. You read his story. He married pagan women that worshiped idols. It was a complete grief to his mother and father. He cared nothing for his birthright. He never took responsibility. He blamed everything on Jacob. So he's deceived me twice. Hey, buddy, he didn't deceive you the first time. You sold your birthright for a bowl of beans. You didn't care about destiny. You didn't care about God. You didn't care about the things of God, nor do you now. He didn't want to change. He didn't want to serve God. He wanted the blessing while remaining godless and immoral. And listen, the most important part of that birthright, I mentioned earlier, it had to do with receiving a double portion of the inheritance from the father, had to do with serving as, as the priest leading the family in, in the worship of God, offering sacrifices. But most importantly, it had to do with transmitting the promises that God had given to Abraham and Isaac. Promises about inheriting the promised land and about the coming savior of the world. 
the seed through whom all nations of the world would be blessed. That was the most important part of that inheritance, of that birthright. And God was not going to trust something that important, the most important message in the history of the world. God was not going to trust something like that to a person like Esau. Now here's some other thoughts. God still blessed Esau. God blessed him in the measure that he could. God blessed him to the degree that he could. And I don't know if you recall, we read the two blessings. Esau cried, don't you have just a blessing for me? There was actually similarity between the blessings. God told Jacob, hey, you're, you're going to have the fat of the earth and, and receive the dew of heaven. And then when it came to Esau, you're going to live with the fat of the earth and receive the dew of heaven. The difference, one would be a gift from God. The other one, it would only come through fighting and striving. You know, God is good. And though some reject him and the birthright of salvation, he still blesses them all he can. But without the birthright, you can't have the full blessing. And there are people, maybe even sitting here listening to me tonight, you have rejected God, don't want to have anything to do with him, and you got attitude plus sitting in here, somebody dragged you out. You may have a mocking attitude. You know what? God will bless you as much as he can. He loves you. And even though Esau was profane, even though he was godless, he was careless about God, he... he, he Trumped on the, 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 the principles that God had given him and his family, God still blessed him to the degree that he could. Our Heavenly Father is amazing. He causes his sun to shine on the righteous and the unrighteous. He causes the rain to fall on the good and on the evil in hopes that those that are away from him will come to him. Now, the truth is, if we want to obtain the fullness of the Father's blessing... Like Jacob, we must come clothed in the garments of our older brother, Jesus. The only way Jacob got that blessing is he wore the garments of his older brother. We come clothed in the righteousness of the one called the firstborn of many brethren. Thank God for what Jesus has done. Now, I want you to consider that Isaac gave and then ratified that blessing as an act of faith. By faith, he blessed Jacob. By faith, he blessed Esau. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. He believed it and he spoke it because God had said it. There was not much in the history or in the present conduct of Jacob to give any hope concerning good things to come. He did it by faith. I mean, hey, Jacob has just proved to be a deceiver and a liar. He came into his father's presence, lied to his blind father's face, and even said that God had helped him. Lied about the whole thing. It's amazing. Now, remember, shortly after I was saved, was attending a little Pentecostal church, and I didn't have many friends, almost none, in the church, because everyone was afraid of me. I didn't look like they looked. Most of the people in the church were quite old. I'd come out of a drug background. I was the only male in the church with long hair, and I had very, very long hair. I had a long red beard. My clothing was different. My vernacular was different. Everything about me was different, and they avoided me like I had some kind of a disease. Literally. In fact, the, the, I still remember, you know, there was a, a, a woman, the only thing she ever said to me she came up and said, doesn't the Bible say it's a sin for a man to have long hair? Turned around and walked away. That was in lieu of, hi, my name is. I wish she would have read the next verse. Paul said, you know, but we have no such custom. But she didn't read that part. 
But I went anyway because they talked about Jesus and they preached the Bible, though they were the most unfriendly bunch of people as a whole that you can imagine. But there was one person that took interest in me and actually, to a degree, took me under their wing and prayed for me and encouraged me. And they shared me with me one day. They said, Bayless, you know so-and-so. And she mentioned one of the leaders in the church. I said, yeah, yeah, sure I know him. He was one of the most well-known Christians in the whole town. His position, he, he was involved in um, a ministry that, that involved to a degree all the churches in the whole town. Very well known, highly esteemed. And this person said, Bayless, he called me aside the other day and he told me to stop wasting my time with you. He said, look, that Bayless guy, he's never gonna amount to anything. You're totally wasting your time with him. You're spinning your wheels. Look, I, I'm not just advising you, but I am telling you, don't spend any time with him anymore. And then he went on to say, but his friend, and he was talking about a friend I brought to church with me one time, says he really has potential. You might do well to spend some time with his friend. Now, it's been like 38 years, and to this day, that friend of mine, though I still pray for him today, has never served God, as far as I know, one day of his life in 38 years. But you know what the person said to that leader in the church? Said, you know what? Thanks for talking to me, but God has showed me that he wants to do something with this young man, and I'm going to go by what God told me. I'm so glad. God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He looks on the heart. God doesn't look by a past track record. Like I said, you look at Jacob's track record, you look at what he's just done, and there's no indication that these things can come to pass. There's no indication of any good in his future. Isaac spoke the blessing by faith. And I know there are some of you sitting out here right now some folks would never suspect a thing because of your history, maybe because of the way you look, but you are radioactive. God has his hands on you, and he wants to do some things in and through you, some things that, that may, might even be nation-shaking. Let us not inter underestimate what God might do. Now, as well as coming from the heart and being based on God's words, blessings that are spoken by faith generally require patience. Everybody say patience. patience. Look with me in Genesis 28, verse 1. Now, this is Isaac um, is blessing Jacob again, but this is as Jacob's running away to escape his brother Esau so he doesn't get killed. Chapter 28, verse 1, Then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. In other words, like your brother has. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful, and multiply you, that you may be an assembly of peoples, and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. Now, previously, Isaac has blessed Jacob unwittingly, thinking that he's blessing Esau, but now, he blesses Jacob on purpose to encourage and to confirm him. But I want you to consider this. He's been blessed with authority, but he's forced to flee. He's been blessed with abundance, but he leaves as a poor man. Instead of being in charge, like the blessing said, he ends up serving his uncle Laban for 14 years. Now think about it. Hear the blessing. You're going to have authority. 
You're going to serve. Others are going to serve you. Your brothers are going to bow down to you. You're going to have abundance, multiplication. You are blessed. And immediately, almost just the opposite happens. Instead of being blessed materially, he's made poor. Instead of having authority, he's put under someone else's heel. Instead of being in charge, he has to run away. It looks like just the opposite of what God has said has become his reality. But eventually, it all comes to pass. Look with me, if you would, in Genesis 32. Jacob is now coming back to the land of his inheritance. And in verse 9, then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your family, and I'll deal well with you. I'm not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you've shown your servant. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. When he fled, all he had was a stick. And if you read the entirety of the story, God gave him flocks and herds and servants and wealth. God had blessed him enormously. But he said, when I left, all I had was this shepherd's staff. I have a friend, more of an acquaintance, but we'll, we'll call her a friend. She uh, couldn't conceive. She and her husband tried for years to have a baby and couldn't. Nothing they, they'd done worked. She was in a meeting and the evangelist called her out, didn't know anything about the situation, laid hands on her and prophesied to her, says, God is going to give you a child. You are going to conceive and give birth. And she said it was the most unusual experience. She, she didn't expect it to happen. Boom, she hit the deck. And there as she's lying on the floor, she said the presence of God washed over me. And she talks about the things that happened. One of the most unusual supernatural experiences she had ever had. And the man didn't know anything about her situation and told her she's going to conceive. So, I mean, she goes back to the hotel that night and she's thinking, you know, she's going to conceive. Well, she doesn't conceive that night. She doesn't conceive during the next week. And her husband and her were being doers of the word, believe me. <laughs> and she didn't conceive the next month. She didn't conceive the next year. Two years rolled by. Three years rolled by. Four years rolled by. Five years rolled by. Six years rolled by. Seven years rolled by, eight years, nine years, and then the tenth year, surprise, 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 <laughs> she got pregnant. So he says, why did it take ten years? I have no idea. <laughs> the point, however, is hang in there. You hang in there. God's promises come to pass. No declaration of God is void of power. Now in the next scene in Hebrews 11, we find Jacob as an old man leaning on that very staff that he just mentioned in his prayer. It's become a symbol of all that God has done and Jacob now knows the power of blessing. Look with me back in Hebrews 11, if you would. I'm going to take just a few more minutes. Hebrews 11 and verse 21. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. Now, he actually spoke prophetically about all of his sons, but the writer of Hebrews just singles out his two grandsons. 
Though they were born in Egypt, Jacob adopted Joseph's sons as his own. He made them heads of tribes as if they were his own sons. And as it was in Jacob's case, the younger of Joseph's sons gets the greater blessing. And again, it was all done by faith because of what God revealed to him. Verse 22, by faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones. That is that they were to be taken back to the land that had been promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But I want you to notice, when he was dying, he made mention of the departure of the children of Israel. You see, as long as Joseph was the prime minister of all of Egypt, Egypt had become a place of plenty and a place of ease to the Israelites. They had abundance. They had the best part of the land to live in. They were favored. But by making mention of the coming departure, Joseph was saying, don't get too comfortable. A friend, this earthly life, no matter what benefits you may personally enjoy, is only temporary. We will all change locations. Every one of us is just a sojourner here, my friend. We are not permanent residents. We are just passing through. And though Joseph lived and died in Egypt, he didn't live and die as an Egyptian, but as an Israelite. And though I live and die on earth, I am a citizen of a different country, my friend. I am a citizen of a different kingdom. Now here's just a closing thought. Verse 20, Isaac blesses Jacob and Esau. When he calls Esau in, he said, I don't know the day of my death. He was very old and realized that he was nearing death. And he spoke a blessing that was so laden with potential and power that it changed lives and it changed generations to come. In verse 21, Jacob, when he was dying, pronounced a blessing on Joseph's sons. And then in verse 22, Joseph, when he was dying, was used by God. To the older people in the house tonight, listen to me. Some of the greatest blessings you will impart will come as you grow closer to transitioning from earth to heaven. Your greatest days are not behind you. The longer you walk with Jesus, the more value you have. Please bless us with your wisdom. Please bless us with your knowledge. Please bless us with your faith. We need what you have. And you can have the greatest impact for the kingdom of God in your latter years if you will just trust him. The house of God needs you. The church of Jesus Christ needs you. We need what you have and we need what God can do through you. And to the parents that are here, listen. I believe in speaking positive to our kids. I think it's important. You know, you, you can poison the life of your child or you can bless the life of your child. James says, out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. Some parents have, have beaten down and poisoned and hurt their kids by the words they've spoken over them. And maybe you just do what was done to you. Well, you know what can change with you? Start speaking positively, but more than that, listen for what God would say to you about your kids. These men spoke blessings, but it was just an echo 
of what God had said. And when their hearts and lips agreed with, what, with God's declaration about their children, power was unleashed. Parents, you have an amazing ability like no one else to bless the life of your children. And maybe you, you messed it up. Maybe they're, they're grown and out on their own. You may have kids that may not even speak to you because you were harsh with them like your daddy was harsh with you. Well, you know what? Maybe daddy walked in all the light he had, but you've got a little more light than daddy had. Even if your kids are gone and the situation is not ideal, get on your knees and pray and ask God to show you things about your posterity and then put your heart and lips together and speak those blessings over your children. You know, as redundant as this might sound, I am going to state it once again. It is not a coincidence that you're watching me right now. You could be anywhere doing anything else, but you're listening in to me. Why is that? It's because God loves you and he's trying to get your attention, yea, even through a broadcast like this. Sometimes God uses funny people. Sometimes he uses funny ways to do it, but you just need to know you are loved by God. He loves you so much he sent his own son to die on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin so you might come into a relationship with him. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Put your trust in him today. Confess Jesus as the Lord of your life and God will bring you into a relationship with himself that the Bible calls salvation. He will not turn you away if you come to him. Go ahead and do it. And I encourage you, join us next week. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Heeft u genoten van deze boodschap? Bestel dan de volledige preek op cd of dvd. De contactgegevens staan nu in beeld. We bidden dat u blijft groeien in wijsheid, geloof en de kracht door Gods woord. dreams. But how do dreams come true? Noah also had a dream, a calling from God, and he did the right things to make sure that dream came true. Learn from him. This CD or DVD message from Bayless Conley helps you discover what you can do to see your dream come true. Order Heroes of Faith, Noah. Just use the information on screen now.